In this video we are going to look at Part B of the Pharmacy Oral Exam which is legal and ethical practice. We've gathered insights from examiners, preceptors and industry experts to give you the best chance of success in this section. In this episode we'll be focusing on two different scenarios. Let's dive into it. Imagine you are the sole pharmacist working in a community pharmacy in Australia. One day, a patient's wife approaches you and asks for her husband's medication list. She wants to keep a copy at home in case of an emergency. She claims to have her husband's consent to access this information. What do you do? Consider these questions when formulating your answer. Remember this section is only 5 minutes and it is done as a discussion rather than a role play or monologue. This means that the examiners can interrupt you at any time to ask you additional questions. Don't forget to refer to key documents and laws where possible to support your answers. Check out our in-depth video about this using the link in the description below. Now here's a sample answer. In this situation, my first and foremost ethical consideration is to respect the patient's privacy and confidentiality. To approach this ethically, I would take the following steps. First I would politely explain that I need to confirm the patient has agreed to the release of their medical information regardless of their relationship. I would request evidence, such as written consent to ensure that the claim is genuine and the patient's privacy rights are being protected. I must always prioritize the patient's best interests. This is stated in the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia's Code of Ethics Guidelines document. Unless there is clear and verifiable evidence of patient consent, it is my duty to safeguard their confidentiality. I would explain to the wife the importance of maintaining patient privacy and the legal implications that may arise from sharing confidential information without proper authorization. Now, let's explore the legal considerations that guide my actions in this scenario. Australia has stringent regulations regarding patient confidentiality and the disclosure of medical information. It is essential to adhere to these laws while addressing the situation. I would inform the wife that disclosing patient information without proper authorization would be a direct breach of the Australian Privacy Act of 1988. I would emphasize that it is my legal obligation to protect patient confidentiality and that this duty must not be compromised. Unless I have written authority from the patient to release their medication information I could lose my pharmacy registration and the pharmacy would also be under legal scrutiny. Finally, I would maintain accurate records of the encounter, documenting the details of the wife's request, any evidence provided, and the conversation that took place. This documentation serves as a crucial record of my adherence to legal requirements and ethical decision-making processes. If the wife has written approval from the patient to release their medical records I will call the patient to confirm before releasing their information to cover all my bases. If the wife is unable to verify that they have approval from the patient to collect their medical information I would politely explain the legal and ethical issues and seek to assist them in an alternate way. For example offering to give the medical information to the patient when they return to the pharmacy next. Lastly, when faced with an ethical and legal dilemma it is important to educate the customer and maintain accurate documentation to further strengthen our commitment to ethical and legal practices. Now let's take a look at another scenario. In this scenario imagine that you are the sole pharmacist working in a community pharmacy one day, a customer comes to the pharmacy seeking an over-the-counter medication that is not suitable for their medical condition. The customer insists on purchasing the medication despite your professional recommendation against it. What do you do? In this situation, I am faced with a dilemma, balancing the customer's autonomy and their best interests while adhering to the legal framework governing the sale and supply of medications. First I would engage in a respectful conversation to understand their concerns and reasons for insisting on the medication. By actively listening, I can gain valuable insights into their perspective. However, it is equally crucial for me, as a healthcare professional, to provide accurate and evidence-based information to ensure the customer's safety and well-being. The Pharmaceutical Society of Australia's Code of Ethics Care Principle 1 states that a pharmacist must make the health and well-being of their patient their first priority. I would take the opportunity to educate the customer about the potential risks and reasons behind my professional recommendation against the medication. By explaining the potential harm and offering alternative options that are more suitable for their condition, I aim to empower them with the knowledge necessary to make an informed decision. 
In some instances, despite my efforts, the customer may still insist on purchasing the medication. In such cases, I must balance their autonomy with my duty of care. If I genuinely believe that the medication is not appropriate and poses potential harm, I may need to exercise my right to refuse the sale. This decision would be based on professional guidelines and legal obligations, ensuring the customer's safety remains a top priority. It is important to note that documenting the incident is crucial in situations like these including the customer's request, my professional recommendation, and any relevant discussions or actions taken. Finally by providing accurate information, exercising my duty of care and right to refuse medication I strive to navigate these situations with professionalism, integrity, and a commitment to the customer's well-being. Thanks for watching Pharmacy House Australia and good luck with your exams.